Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Today I am joined by County Board of Supervisors Chair Greg Cox, as well as uh, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, who is uh, Chair of the County Subcommittee on COVID-19. I want to start by saying with my colleagues uh, who are here uh, leading the public health response to COVID-19, um, with all of us, with really one message, we must remain motivated and we must remain vigilant as San Diegans. We need to continue our commitment to stopping the spread of the virus among all communities here in San Diego. And together, the city and the county uh, have moved early and swiftly to protect all San Diegans from the coronavirus. We can't stop now. So let's stay on this positive track of doing the right thing and continuing to save lives. We have a city and a county that are united in working together, and that is incredibly important. Today I'm going to provide some updates on, uh, first, a $25 million agreement that has been reached between the city and the county that will be a real game changer for mental health and homelessness in San Diego. Second, I will give a public safety update. And lastly, a very timely story about San Diegans stepping up to help their neighbors. Um, today, as I said, I'm particularly pleased to be joined with my colleagues uh, at the county. We are here to discuss a major initiative that we are launching together. The San Diego region is committing $25 million to treat, stabilize, and house individuals experiencing mental illness and substance abuse issues. This is significant because so many San Diegans who suffer from these issues are also homeless. And this fund is for all San Diegans housed and unhoused. But the need is particularly great for those people who do not have a home. And as every San Diego knows, mental illness and drug and alcohol use are some of the most urgent and challenging needs on our streets right now. This fund is also significant because the dollars will help service providers build or acquire property so that they can serve more people. And right now, many properties, more than ever before, particularly motels that are sitting empty during this COVID-19 crisis, may be available to help meet this need. And so tapping into some of these unused hotels and motels to serve our homeless is an amazing opportunity. And we are also exploring other resources in addition to and separate from this fund uh, to expand upon this very unique concept. This is important because we, when we move people out of the convention center, we need housing. So we are going to be creative. Uh, we are going to be innovative. And we are going to make sure that San Diego continues to lead the state and the country on homeless services. We are united in this effort. This $25 million fund was in the in works well before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. And now it will go into effect when the need is greater than it's ever been before. Um, you've heard me say this over the last several weeks. We can address COVID-19 crisis and our homeless crisis at the same time. And we are at a moment where we are significantly realigning our homeless services in order to address this. And now, at the same moment, we have $25 million available to treat and stabilize many of the same individuals who are most vulnerable to this virus. These are local dollars being committed, and the fund consists of money that was left over from the old redevelopment zones, which the state eliminated back in 2011. And for several years, the city and the county have been in court to decide how these regional funds would be divided up. The final result of that lawsuit was yet to be determined. And Supervisor Fletcher, Supervisor Cox, and I are here because it's time to put this money to use. So we work together with our colleagues to free up a portion of these funds right now. The City of Council approved this earlier in March, and the County Board of Supervisors agreed to it yesterday. This pool of money which is called the Behavioral Health Impact Fund, is available to organizations that provide mental health and substance abuse services. And it gives service providers the opportunity to buy, expand, or renovate a facility 
to increase their capacity to serve these individuals. Organizations that offer drug treatment, alcohol treatment, or mental health services can apply for this funding. The need is real. On average, the city responds to more than 50,000 calls per year related to mental health or substance abuse issues. That's the equivalent of approximately 30 first responders out of duty for their entire shift on a single day. This puts a strain on our entire system and reduces our effectiveness to respond to urgent calls. These dollars are going to go a long way to limiting the number of first responders who aren't available for other public safety needs. And there are numerous organizations who provide these treatments, and they desperately want more room and capacity to offer these services. The Behavioral Health Impact Fund is going to do just that. So I will conclude by saying that Operation Shelter to Home at the Convention Center has two main goals. Keep homeless individuals healthy and get them housed. This $25 million fund complements these goals perfectly. Chairman Cox and Supervisor Fletcher have been tremendous partners over the year at the county to also change our approach to how our region addresses mental health. This is going to be a real game changer. So to all of our providers, this funding is ready and available for you to take advantage of. Let's get more people off the streets into a home and stabilized with the supportive care that they need. Uh, I know that by working together, which we will continue to do, we're going to make a real difference with this fund. With that, it is my pleasure to invite uh, Chairman Greg Cox of the County Board of Supervisors to say a few words. Chairman? Thank you, Mayor. Earlier this year, when I was giving my State of the County address, I announced the launch of this major initiative along with Supervisor Fletcher and in partnership with the City of San Diego. The idea was to create a behavioral health impact fund to support organizations that are on the front line serving the most vulnerable members of our society. Our Board of Supervisors has continuously discussed the need for additional levels of care for those who struggle with mental health and substance use disorders. This includes people in crisis as well as those that require aftercare and community-based treatments. The cost of building these types of facilities can be beyond the, the means of most nonprofits, and our healthcare partners have stepped up many times, time and time again, to piece together the capital they needed in order to do some of the things that they are doing now in our communities. We know. Believe me, we know this better than anybody, that government can't do it alone, which is why we pursued this innovative proposal. Now, at the time, we thought it was an innovative uh, way to help organizations that are helping people cope with the day-to-day -day challenges they face. Little did we know that we would be dealing with something as we are now with the COVID-19 public health crisis, which is certainly the largest public health crisis this region has ever faced. Now this fund will play an important and a critical role in helping this region cope with and recover from the corona crisis. If you think about it, it's a great way to use these former redevelopment funds. Monies that were going to be used to raise up buildings will now be used to lift up lives. I want to thank Mayor Faulkner and the entire City Council for their bold leadership in committing the City to this fund. And I want to thank Supervisor Fletcher and my colleagues on the board for the support of this. Supervisor Fletcher has worked with myself and the mayor on developing this proposal. And this is a great example of how the cooperation and collaboration and the teamwork that has been going on these last few years between the city of San Diego and the county of San Diego. It's amazing what we can do when we all work together. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, now I welcome uh, Supervisor uh, Nathan Fletcher, who's also been very instrumental in getting this uh, portion of these funds across the finish line. Supervisor, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Chair Cox. Uh, you know, if you're an individual out there and you're concerned about your public health uh, because of the dangers posed by coronavirus, uh, you don't care uh, who it is that can help you, whether it's the city uh, or the county or the state. And the reality is we don't care either. Uh, which is why in every step of our response to this pandemic outbreak, uh, we have been working together. 
Uh, and I want to commend the mayor and the city council and, uh, and the entire board of supervisors for really understanding and taking to heart the reality that we are one region that has one need, uh, which is how do we protect the most lives possible. Uh, from the very outset of this, uh, we have been in daily communication. Uh, like I said, I, I talked to the mayor every day, multiple times a day, uh, and we've worked together, uh, whether it was getting hand washing stations up out of the gate, uh, whether it was putting public health nurses in shelters, uh, whether it was coordinating and collaborating and, and working together on the efforts around the convention center, uh, every step of the way and every day, San Diegans should take pride and comfort in knowing that our jurisdictions are aligned uh, with one mission and one purpose, uh, and we are working seamlessly together. Uh, but this isn't, uh, the coronavirus is not the first time in which we've seen this collaboration. Uh, this collaboration uh, existed when we worked together on our syringe service policies. Uh, it existed when we worked together to bring substance abuse treatment to the county psychiatric hospital in the Midway District, a very first for our region. Uh, it existed when we've worked together um, on issues surrounding behavioral health uh, and tackling the homeless. And so the Behavioral Health Impact Fund is, is another step uh, in this spirit of collaboration and cooperation. Uh, and I appreciate it. It was months ago when I approached the mayor about the reality that the city and county had this $25 million tied up in lawsuits that had been tied up for years and was likely to continue to be tied up for years. And the real realization hit me that if the county had the money, well, we ought to put it towards behavioral health services, drug treatment, mental health services with an accompanying bed in a residential setting, because that is one of the greatest needs our region faces. And if the city had the money, well, that probably would be what they would use it for. And so why don't we stop the lawsuits and why don't we stop arguing about it? And let's just come to an agreement uh, that $25 million can be put on the street immediately to go to any of our service providers who have the ability to buy a building, acquire a building, renovate a building, expand a building, and they have ongoing revenue streams to provide services. And so this is an innovative and creative approach uh, to immediately and very quickly raise our regional capacity to provide these needed services. There's also an additional opportunity in front of us, uh, which is the opportunity uh, to potentially acquire uh, motels that are, are looking at the reality of having no guests for the foreseeable future and are questioning at what point the economy may come back to the same level uh, where they may be back to a high level of occupancy, a lot of those entities might be willing uh, to sell that entity uh, for a one-time cash payment, and we can take that opportunity to convert those into centers of restoration, of healing, of care, uh, in a way that really increases uh, our regional uh, collaboration and our regional uh, capacity. And that works hand in hand with what's happening at the convention center. Uh, the ability to get this money on the street, $25 million to get it deployed, uh, could potentially be opening doors uh, to individuals who are presently in the convention center uh, because we want the convention center business to come back and we know that it will. Uh, and we want those individuals to have more options for where they can go in a more sustainable way. And so I really appreciate uh, Chairman Cox's support um, of this. I appreciate the mayor's leadership on getting this through the city. And I think that this patient-centered approach uh, to providing not only the services but the care coordination uh, and everything else that goes into it uh, is a great testament to what can happen when jurisdictions are willing to work together, uh, are willing to resolve years-long uh, disputes uh, and say, let's focus on the greater good. Um, and I'll just say I'm, I'm incredibly uh, pleased that, that here in San Diego uh, we are doing that. Uh, we're doing that when it comes to homeless, we're doing that when it comes to behavioral health, uh, and we are definitely doing that when it comes to responding to the challenges of coronavirus, uh, and our region will be better because of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Supervisor. Thank you for those words. And, and Chairman Cox, uh, now I'd like to provide a quick up, uh, public safety update. As of this morning, no new tests have come back positive among the San Diego Police Department or the San Diego Fire Rescue. And in addition to a staffing update each day, uh, Chief uh, David Nislight of our Police Department provides me on the latest figures on calls that are coming into STPD. This morning, he told me about an increase in calls about people who were not complying with some public health orders, specifically calls related to individuals not following proper physical distancing and establishments not following the state, county, and city directives. So I'd like to take this moment again to remind San Diegans of the fight ahead. Now is not the time to get complacent. And it is very true that San Diego has been very proactive and aggressive in our response. 
And that means for many that may feel like, hey, we're ahead, but we have to maintain our current posture, and we will. Now is the time to redouble our efforts. This means that physical distancing of at least six feet, washing your hands in warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds, staying at home as much as possible, and if you leave your place, cover your face. These changes are impacting lives, but they are also saving lives. That's why we are doing this. The actions of a few will have an impact on us all. So let's continue doing our part. Let's stay at home. Let's stay safe. Let's save lives. I'm counting on every San Diegan to continue helping our efforts to keep our community safe and prevent the spread of this virus. Keep it up. Finally, I'd like to conclude our daily updates by highlighting San Diegans stepping up in a time of great need. The week ahead is one celebrated by many people of many religious faiths, where tradition typically brings all of us together to practice their faith through good company, food, and music. And for our Jewish community, this evening marks the beginning of Passover. Passover is a holiday that celebrates hope, freedom, the resilience of spirit and the responsibility of the community. This year's Passover, of course, comes at a time we are all being asked to take responsibility, to put the safety of our community and each other as our top priority. No doubt, tonight will be a very different experience for many celebrating Passover due to the state's stay-at-home order. And as all, we are all finding new ways to adapt and to stay connected, I know many religious leaders have been holding services and classes online. One of these leaders is Rabbi Shalom of the Chabad congregation throughout San Diego. But Rabbi Shalom took it a step further. He understood that the challenges that many face trying to celebrate Passover this year. Some found it difficult to shop for the staples that mark a traditional Seder dinner to mark the first and second nights of Passover. And each food item on the Seder plate and its position, of course, has a purpose. Whether it's matzah, haroset, each item holds deep meaning in this tradition. So Rabbi Shalom and a group of volunteers stepped up. They collected over $2,000 in groceries that are essential to the celebration and then made deliveries to the folks who needed it the most. And as I said, the story of Passover is one of hope. And as we get through this crisis together, we must remember these stories of San Diegans stepping up. They reaffirm our faith in each other and give us hope for tomorrow. So if you see a San Diegan, and there are many that are stepping up, share it with us at hashtag San Diego Steps Up. We will get through this as one city, one region, and we will do it by working together. With that, I will open it up for any questions from members of the media. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one question from Kasha with Fox 5. How did these different organizations apply for the funding from this $25 million? Funding will just uh, be available as of this week. We're expecting uh, many great organizations to take advantage of it. Again, a very unique uh, partnership. Um, I'm expecting uh, a lot of great interest. Um, and we're looking, obviously, not only even to the start, with this 25 million, but figure out ways that we can leverage these dollars um, potentially with either state and federal funding as well. Any other questions on today's topics? Yes. Guillermo with Univision. Just to clarify, are these organizations, uh, this fund available for organizations in the city of San Diego or the whole city county? City of San Diego. Just yes. the city of San Diego? They're providing these services okay. now. And then that same question, I'm not sure if you answer, but how is there going to be an application process? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, there will be, and we'll be announcing all of that uh, in the coming week. Uh, again, to, with the board's action, uh, the timely action of the Board of Supervisors just yesterday, the City Council's action, uh, both unanimous, I might add, and it gets to that spirit of cooperation and working together. So we will be uh, working very quickly to get these funds on the street, get these applications. Uh, obviously, those organizations have already been tracking on it, um, and our ability to not only provide that help and support, but dollars that will increase capacity. Talking about units, that's what this is all about. Also, is there a limit as to 
uh, I guess, per application or per organization, is there a limit in, in funds? Uh, I don't know the specifics on that in terms of limit per one, but that's, uh, I can get you that answer on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? With that, I want to thank uh, my colleagues from the Board of Supervisors for their help and support. That will conclude today's briefing and look forward to joining everyone tomorrow. Thank you.